haven't quite gone over to the green side. Charlie, Melissa and Graham certainly have nothing to worry about, but I do need to borrow from their gardening world for a little craft project I want to share with you. We're going to have a go at eco-printing, which in a nutshell is using the pigments and the shapes from plants to print onto fabric and other materials. Now, what I love most about this craft is no two finished results are ever the same. It is unique. You can buy kits, but what I want to show you is how to use things you've already got at home just to save a little bit of money and make the whole thing easier. And if you've got a bunch of friends, get them together, because this is one you can all have a go at. You're going to hear me refer to one word throughout this process, and that is mordant. Now, basically what a mordant is, it's a fixative that helps to lock the pigment or the colour and the pattern into the material you're using. So first up, we're going to do some printing onto some watercolour paper. So the type of mordant we're using is white vinegar. The ratio here of vinegar to water is basically one part white vinegar to two parts water. Take the paper, just dip it in, let it soak a little before you remove it. Another word common to this process is known as modifier. Sounds very technical, but it's not, trust me. What a modifier does is it deepens and enhances the colour of the leaves you're actually printing. And it's easy to make your own modifier with, of all things, rusty tools. You've probably got some like this in your shed. I certainly have. So just leave these in the bottom of a tub and add water and vinegar, just in the same ratio as I did before. And you'll see, after a week, your tools will be a bit cleaner. And they just impart all of that rust into the liquid, and that's what you need. With a good quality watercolour paper, you can make your own beautifully printed cards. So after they've been soaking a bit, just fold them in half evenly and squeeze out the excess water. You don't want them too soaking. And then just trim your leaves, the ones that you actually want to print with, and just have them all lined up ready to go. Dip them into your modifier. And with the card open, just shake off the excess, and then you can lay those down like that. Then if you fold the card in half, essentially, once this is printed, you'll get the same kind of pattern on both sides. So just lay that on the top. And then if you've got a little rolling pin or a spare bit of dowel, just go over. Again, to squeeze the colour and make sure you're going to get a good print. Just do it a couple of times, back and forth. Certainly a good one if you like your messy crafts, that's for sure. when you look at the shape of a leaf, it's obviously softer on top and it's a little bit more defined underneath. So you'll find that you'll get a better print if you put that defined side down. And you'll notice here that what I'm doing is I'm stacking as I go. And just to get double value, I've actually put a little leaf in between each of the layers. That means I get a leaf print on the outside of the card as well as the inside. Oh, and also, if you want something that's a bit more defined and not so blurry, make sure that your paper isn't too sopping wet. So just dry it out a little bit. That just gives you a bit more structure and definition to the leaves. To keep these bundled together and stop the leaves from falling out, what I'm using here are just some little bits of dowel. If you've got paddle pop sticks, that would work too. Put a few on the bottom and lay the bundle on top. And then some sticks across the top. That just separates the string, which I'm wrapping it with, and just keeps it really tied neatly. Then the whole packet gets popped into a steamer for about an hour and a half on a moderate kind of temperature. A barbecue outside is ideal for this. With the cooking done, leave the whole bundle in the steamer overnight. That really helps to deepen and strengthen the colour. Then you can undo the string, take out the leaves and reveal all of your beautiful handiwork. A cake rack's ideal. It'll just help that paper to dry thoroughly. Now they're dry, the colours and detail is superb. Love these. So to make them into a greeting card, just get some cardboard, lay that within, get a long needle and just stitch the two together. I'm just using this beautiful embroidery thread. A couple of loops 
whoever you're giving this to can see the beautiful printing on both sides. Now for printing on fabric. I'm using cotton and just like the paper before, we do have to pre-treat it. So instead of using a vinegar and water solution as a mordant, for this cotton fabric, we're using soy milk. It basically binds the fibre and it helps the colour to penetrate more thoroughly. So once that's all been treated and dried, you'll end up with dry cotton like this. Just take a water atomizer and dampen it down very lightly and that has to happen before you start laying out the leaves. And just like before, we're using our rust water. You remember the one with the drill bits in the bottom? Just give it a good mix so it's nice and even. And then you can just take the leaves of choice. So I think these will die beautifully. So you strip those down, dip in. Lay down your leaves on one half, then we can fold over the other half of the fabric and roll together. using our little rolling pin gadget again. Just roll tightly around the dowel. And then to bind it together, some string just across one side and then back the other way. Next up, you need to boil the fabric. If you like the whiteness of the fabric, just use plain, clean water. Otherwise, if you're after something a little softer, you might like to try tea stain dyeing. You've probably done that before. It gives you a nice, soft, mellow, almost creamy colour. Now, this will also act as a mordant, but you're going to need about a dozen tea bags in a big pot like this. And you've probably guessed by now, best not to use your best pots and pans for this kind of craft. So once you've made that good tea solution, dunk these in, cook them for about an hour and a half, let it cool and then leave it overnight. I find it so fascinating how much the colour changes. It's just incredible and it's all to do with the chemical reactions within the leaves and also, of course, the mordants that you actually use. So let's snip away the string, let's see what we've got, it's always exciting. Open it up and take away the leaves inside. Beautiful. Now the final step in the process is to neutralise the fabric. Because we use that rusty water, it might want to eat into the fabric, so use a little bit of bicarb, just a little dash into the bucket of water there and just rinse it clean. And then hang it out to dry. It's just a little trip to where we have been all along. The colour is quite dark when they're wet, but when they dry, they fade down a lot, and you can see they just become really soft and beautiful. Such a great result. So once you've got the hang of this eco printing, there's no limit to what you can create. Obviously, paper and cardboard, things like cards, and you can do artwork for frames. You can do tableware, you could do cushion covers, bed sheeting, even clothing, t shirts or pashminas. So if you like this idea, why not get a whole group together, put the kettle on and have a craft noon. And if you do make beautiful things, don't forget to send us photos. We would love to post them on our socials.